what's going on viewers and subscribers welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video i have been on this forum for some time now approximately three to four months but nonetheless i'm here again um, to pick up steam to come to you with another video all right so in today's video i'm going to talk to you about foundation footing and how you can know or to determine the minimum amount of reinforcement that you should put in your foundation footing all right now there's a lot of misconception about foundation footing especially as it comes to the reinforcement what i have observed on site they are not doing it they are not executing it properly they are doing it in fact in the reverse so i hope this video clear up some of those misconceptions and that going forward people who view this video can know how to instruct or to look for when they are doing their dream home how the foundation footing is supposed to be done in terms of reinforcement now i cannot stress it that the foundation footing is the most critical part of your structure if your foundation footing is not adequate to carry the weight of the structure or the load of the building that building is not going to be stable and you can end up with what is called shear failure so i'm going to do this video i'm going to show you how to come up with the minimum reinforcement now this is not the actual reinforcement the actual reinforcement you have to design the footing to carry the load and to come up with the required amount of reinforcement to carry that load this is the minimum reinforcement for a particular size footing right so each structural members they have what is called a minimum amount of reinforcement for a particular size so if you look at the the size of a reinforced enforcement going forward and it does not meet the minimum then you can be in trouble all right so this video i'm going to show you how to calculate the minimum amount of reinforcement in terms of your main bars and your distribution bar to go in your typical foundation footing all right stay tuned so viewers and subscribers so here we have so here we have it i'm going to show you how to determine your minimum main reinforcement and your minimum distribution reinforcement otherwise known as your temperature shrinkage for your wall footing your reinforced concrete wall footing all right so now this is a elevation view or a cross-sectional view so this is the footing here so at the base of the footing the base is 24 inches wide and it has a thickness of 12 inches and it carries a six inches thick concrete wall so this is a typical footing that we use in jamaica to do our building construction all right so step number one we're going to take a one foot strip of the footing okay so a concrete footing the classification for a concrete fo concrete footing it is known as a continuous footing or a cantilever footing and the reason it is termed continuous footing is that is like is that is stretched for a particular length all right so in engineering design as i've stated to you on in previous videos that when we are designing any structural element we do not design for the entire thing we take a one foot strip or a one meter strip in this instance because we are using imperial measurements we are going to take a one foot strip so this is a one foot strip here of the strips continuous footing it, if you notice it is 12 12 inches and it has nine inches to the left 
90 inches to the right with a 6 inches concrete wall at the center so that is to maintain balance you have 9 inches on either side in order to obtain stability all right so as you can see here this is the section cut here this is a plan view is a section cut here and that tells us that the footing is continuous but we only cut off one foot and design that one foot and then we're going to replicate that one foot design over the entire length of the wall footing all right so that is step number one step number two we're going to calculate the minimum reinforcement the minimum main reinforcement so according to the aci code section 10.5.4 and section 7.12.2 the minimum area of steel is 0 0.018 bh where b is the breadth and h is the height or the thickness of the footing all right so b we have it here as 12 inches and h we have it here as 12 inches so let me review that quickly and show you so this is the 12 inches for the one foot strip right the one foot strip and this is the 12 inches thickness or height so it is 0 0.0018 times 12 inches times 12 inches and that works out to be 0 0.2592 inch square okay so we are going to use half in steel for our main reinforcement i mean you can use any steel you want as long as you work out the spacing for that steel but in this instance the typical reinforcing bar that we use is a half inch bar okay so the cross-sectional area of a half inch bar is 0 0.2 inch square okay so let me show you where I get that from. So if we turn to our rebar table here, I will look up number four. Now a number four bar is also half, no, a half inch bar is also a number four bar or 30 millimeter. Some some people call it 30 millimeter. Some people call it 12 millimeter. The actual figure is really 12.5 millimeter because one inch is equal to 25 millimeter half of 12 12.5 millimeter half of 25 millimeter is 12.5 millimeter so number four bar is a half inch bar so the nominal cross-section area in square inch of a half inch bar is 0 0.20 inch square so that is where I, i've gotten that 0 0.20 inch square right so the number of rebars no, because we want to calculate the number of, of number of rebars, we have to divide the area of steel, the minimum area of steel, by the cross-sectional cross area of steel that we are going to use. In this instance, a half-inch bar. So the half-inch bar, as I just demonstrated to you, is 0 0.2 inch square. So it's going to be 0 0.2592 inch square divided by 0 0.2 in square and that works out to be 1.3 rebars now we're going to round this up this 1.3 rebars to two re to two rebars okay so so therefore two rebars for every one foot strip of footing so every one foot strip of footing we're going to use two rebar as our transverse bar or our main bar and we replicate it throughout the length of that wall footing all right so for every foot it is two half inch bar and i'm going to show you how i work out the spacing for the half inch bar all right so three we're going to calculate the distribution bar or what is otherwise called the temperature and shrinkage bar all right so because the 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 size of the footing doesn't change the minimum area of steel for our main reinforcement is going to equal to the area of steel for our distribution reinforcement or our, or our temperature and shrinkage reinforcement but nonetheless i'm going to give you a quick demonstration again to show you that it comes up to the same thing right so our area of steel 
is going to equal to 0 0.018 bh which work out to 0 0.018 times 12 inches times 12 inches we got the same figure here 0 0.2592 inch square right but since three, three rebars are needed for a minimum reinforcement we have to divide this area of steel here by three Right, because remember now we're going to have one longitudinal bar in the center of the, of the footing and we have one on the left, one on the right. So one in the center and one on either side, which is three, the typical wall footing. Right, so we have to divide this area of steel here by three, which works out to be 0 0.09 inch square or 0 0.1 inch square. So we have to turn to our rebar table to see what steel give us an area of 0 0.1 inch square. So again, we turn to our rebar table, right? And we observe that number three bar here, number three, gives us a area of 0 0.11 inch square. And a number three bar is known as a 3 eighths bar, right? So the reason we use number the number is divisible by 8. So it's a number 4 bar divided by 8, you get half inch. If it's a number 3 bar divided by 8, you get 3 eighths. It's a number 5 bars, you divide it by 5, you got a 5 eighths bar. So that's how we come up with the number. So a number 3 bar is equivalent to a 3 eighths bar. Right? So, so we're going to use 3, number 3, 3 eighths bar for a distribution bar. For a footing, right? So we have worked out the distribution bar, three of them, three eighths, and we worked out the our main reinforcement, right? Which is the half inch bar, and we're gonna place two in every one foot strip of the footing. Alright? So we can turn to our detail now. So our detail in plan here, right? So this is our 12 inches strip. Right, so we want within this 12 inches strip, we want two half inch bar to span the width of the base of the footing. All right, so we're gonna have so we're gonna we're gonna offset one inch when we put down the one inch, we're gonna put we're gonna put one reinforcing bar, which is this bar here. All right, then we're gonna measure 10 inches from that bar, we're gonna put down another bar here which is one two and we have a half in space remaining and that's how we get this bar here these two transverse bar horizontal bar we get them to space at 10 inches on center so let me show you how we get back our 12 inches now half inch here which is the cover from 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 the end of the the, the foot into here which is half inch the steel is half inch so that's another one, so that goes up to one inch. Then 10 inch plus that one inch is 11 inch. We put down another bar here to bring it up to 10 and a half. And then half inch to the end, 10 and a half inch plus an half inch, that's 12 inch, right? So 10 and a half inch plus a half inch, that's, a, that's 12 inch. So we're gonna place the number four bar at 10 inches on center for our main bars, okay? So our distribution bars now, this is, a, this is the three bars here. One, two, three that we just worked out. So we're gonna use three, number 10 millimeter, three eighths bar as distribution bar, okay? So that is how I worked out for the main reinforcement and for the distribution reinforcement, otherwise known as the temperature and shrinkage. So the elevation view now, is gonna look something like this. So we have our one, two, three distribution bars. So three 10 millimeter, three eight bars as longitudinal bar for distribution and temperature and shrinkage reinforcement, right? And this is our main bar here, right? This bar here. So it's gonna be 30 millimeter, half inch rebar at 10 inches on center for our main this for our main bars to carry the weight of the structure or the load of the structure okay now let me put some more meat 
on this piece of bone here. Now, when I go to some of the sites, even some of my own projects, they I see where they do the reverse. Okay, they use the three eighths bar here, this bar here that runs horizontal. They use it for three eighths, and the longitudinal bar they use half inch. And I have to correct them a lot of times and say that is not how it's supposed to be done, right? Your half inch bar is supposed to carry the load and your three inches bar is supposed to distribute the load, right? That is number one. Number two, this is not a design footing. So don't want anyone to say that um, I say that Every footing, as long as it has a 12 or uh, 24 inches width, width base, 12 inches thick, this is the design. This is the typical detail for it. No. This information is only illustrating to you viewers and subscribers and viewers of this channel that for a size footing, which is 24 inches in width, 12 inches thickness the minimum reinforcement supposed to match this detail here so at no given time it's supposed to be less than this detail here okay it can be more but not less so in the instance that the engineer designer put in and is getting less reinforcement than the minimum then he has to go with the minimum. If he design, if he or she designed the footing and the reinforcement is more than the minimum, then you can go with the reinforcement that is more than the minimum. So this is only the minimum reinforcement. Another important point I want to make about your footing and which I have observed on many sites most of the builders they do not observe the cover of the reinforcement yes they might use stones and pieces of blocks to catch to prop up the steel so that the steel doesn't touch the bottom but at the sides here and here right they have the steel touching the soil no that is not good because your cover your concrete cover right is there to protect the steel, the reinforcement from moisture and also for chemical, corrosive chemical that is, that is obtained in the soil that can corrode the steel. And if the steel is corroded, you're going to comp compromise the structural integrity of the structure. It is a reinforcement that is carrying the load. Yes, the concrete carries some of the loads. The both of them work in unison to carry the load but if one is compromised the structural integrity of your building is going to be compromised so your concrete cover here if you observe i've written here one inch is minimum i'm saying that it can be more but not less than one inch all right so i hope you have understand what i have done in this video in terms of working out the minimum reinforcement for a concrete footing in the event that you have any question shoot me a question in terms of a comment in the comment section and i will be more than happy to answer your questions all right that is the end end of this video i might upload a video next week i'm not sure but I think I'm going to upload a full calculation of our footing that I have designed. Okay? And show you what goes in the actual design of our footing. Some of this information is in the design. But this is only for the minimum reinforcement. I can't help to stress that. This is only the minimum. So at no given time on your site, your reinforcement on your site in terms of your wall footing, if you're going to use a 24 inch or 2 feet wide by, by a 1 foot thick, supposed to be less than this. Alright? Catch you in the next video. Thank you.